Thanks for staying with us. Now, an opportunity is a situation or condition favorable for attainment of a goal. It can also be defined as a good position, chance, or prospect as for advancement or success. Now, in 2020, the world experienced an unprecedented turn of events as the COVID-19 pandemic halted almost every aspect of our lives. Now, going by the saying that in every problem lies opportunities, we are asking how many babies have been birthed from this challenge and how are we positioned to explore these opportunities. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. We're going to bring in our guest um, shortly, um, but I wanted to hear um, your thoughts, right? Um, Tammy, let me come to you first, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, yeah, so for, for a change, let's talk about the bright side of COVID, right? So it is largely negative. Um, you know, people take ill, people die. Um, people are having cabin fever. They're tired of being at home. You know, we are all a mixed bag of fear and anxiety and all of that. So for a change, let's talk about the bright side, right? Which is that all of this has caused us to take a pause you know, to actually start to reflect on what really, what's really important, you know, in terms of the family um, and, you know, the people around you, your children and all of that. But then we now have more time, again, more to reflect, to consider, and as business owners to try to re-strategize, you know, to, to start to develop new products that would now evolve with, you know, changing consumer needs and consumer behavior and all of that. So, I mean, it's a good time for people to try to use this time to change their lives. Absolutely. You know, for you to be in the right head space, to uh -huh. begin to think of new ideas and all of that. I mean, now I've seen an increase in the number of delivery and errand services business, mm -hmm. you know, we're all at home and we need to move stuff from one place to another. So the logistics that, companies. You know, an increase in like digital <laughs> products, logistics, exactly, digital products, online courses, um, food delivery, like I'm tired of eating my own food. A lot of people <laughs> are. So I see that a lot of people are cooking and all of that. Dr. Brown is making face masks, which is something that I'm sure, you know, at the beginning of last year, they never thought they would pivot into from making like diapers and sanitary pads and now they're making face masks and all of that. So there are lots of opportunities, right? But the way the angle I'm looking at that I want to talk to the guests about is to actually get people to be able to sit down and recognize these opportunities. Like you need to be in the right mental space, the right head space. You know, your mental health has to be great for you to be able to, to <laughs> let me say it in PG, to, to see eye, see road. Do you see? <laughs> so yes, just to talk about how to encourage you. Absolutely. Let me come to you, Sanzi. All right. You know. Okay, so um, here is what I would say. Um, I know there is definitely a lot more job openings for health caregivers, especially for older people maybe who are down with COVID. And now they have a lot of people isolating and isolation, isolation centers are filled up. So within our Nigerian community, I know there's a lot of demand for healthcare workers. So, mm -hmm. and a lot more people are, you know, going back to, okay, what did I, st I studied something that has to do with medicine. This is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're dusting of the certificate and whatever your talents are in taking care of people, you know, and, um, Another thing is digital content creators. We've seen the rise of people like Tao and even yourself and a couple of other people. Yeah, it's because everybody is online. We're looking for ways to entertain ourselves. Mm -hmm. People are in lockdown or people are working from home. And when you put in those six hours working from home, you want something to you know, entertain you since you can't go out for dinner dates or you know, stuff like that. Another thing which uh, concerns me directly is um, there is a bigger market for film. Hmm. So right now, it's not just um, you do your production and it's just for people within Nigeria or within West Africa. This time around, it's, uh, let's say, for instance, you remember Miracle in Cell Number no. 7, mm -hmm. how it became a rave of the moment, and it's a Turkish movie. Bridgerton. A oh, Bridge. Oh, Duke of Hastings. <laughs> Don't go. I'm, I'm on TV. Hot, hot. Don't embarrass me. I'm on TV. I'm on live TV. <laughs> I love you, Duke of Hastings. Yeah. Everybody, even married women, love him. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we, we digress, we you guys, forgive <laughs> us. So, um, Bridgerton, Shonda Land, Shonda yeah. Rhimes came up with another, and this show premiered on um, 
you know, the digital network, mm -hmm. um, January Netflix, 25th, yeah. and the whole world literally watched it. Why? Because people had more time on their hands. Mm. So for creatives, it, it is a good time. Absolutely. I would, I would say it's actually a good time for Netflix. I was watching something that Netflix says every week. Mm -hmm. the whole of 2021 they'll be releasing new films i mean nobody was thinking about netflix but when they shot the cinemas those other opportunities opened up and the world right. is actually watching mm -hmm. you know somebody sent me this picture and i thought to share it it says banks don't like bitcoins taxis don't like uber hotels don't like um uh, airbnb uh, bookstores don't like amazon cinemas don't like netflix <laughs> nine to fives don't like remote they don't like uh, remote work innovation is not always liked and this mm -hmm. is what COVID has brought, innovation. Sure. So I'm going to bring in our guest. Ola Kuleshunri is a friend of the house, is a polymath, an iconoclast, a catalytic thought leader, and a keynote speaker whose expression spans across the globe as he influences and shapes culture. And he's joined us live. Thank you so much from the U.S. <laughs> Thank you, Ola Kuleshunri. It's always a pleasure having you on Waze. Never a dull moment with you. Thank you so much. It's it's always a pleasure being here as well. Um, it's exciting. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And you ladies do bright, um, sharp, and ready for the 2020s. Yes, yeah, so 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so um, PK. The 2020s. Yes, 2020s, yes. So, PK, you, you listened to our, our small banter on the opportunities that we thought. Um, I mean, when we wanted to talk about this topic, there was no better guest to bring than you are the futurist. You are someone that's able to, I mean, so many things you've said, you know, in few meetings that have been that you organized, few events. I mean, you say it and it's almost like it's plain how you have said it, you know, and all of that. Because you are able to predict what the future should look like and place people strategically. So as we're going, into, in, we're going into 2021, right, off of the back of COVID, 2019, there are so many opportunities, even amidst all the pain and everything that people are complaining about. A lot of people are positioning themselves, and we want to be part of those people, and we want our young people watching to be part of those people. So if you were to analyze what the future would look like, you know, in 2021, the babies that would come off COVID, what sh which should we be looking out for? Yes, you know, there's been a lot of um, assumptions about the Great Reset and the idea that, you know, the world is changing really fast, which is true, and that people have to find, you know, specific areas of opportunities and, you know, and all of that, which is really true. But what is even truer is the idea that, you know, the the ingenuity of the human condition will remain a constant, right? And the universe plays out in such a way that everyone in the world has a chance to plug into whatever the prevailing economy is, right? It's just the fairness of life that wherever you are, who you are, the juices of life, the values of life will never be placed beyond your reach that if you embrace a type of discipline and plug into the right forms of clarity, there's always room for you. And so what I've been telling people is don't overthink what is going on. Whatever you are doing, whatever space you find yourself in, I can give you one instrument that is a level playing field, whether you are in the media or you are in fashion or events or you are in farming or you, know, you are in the tech space, whatever you are doing, you know, the key word is pivot. Now, part of that is to understand that the energy of all ideas going forward will be technology. Part of what we forecasted in 2020 January is the idea that a lot of the scientific and technological breakthroughs that we are planning to see in the next 15 years, in the next 20 years, are pretty much collapsed, you know, and that 2020 will collapse them and there will be a fast track and we may find ourselves dealing in 2020, 2021, 2022 with ideas that, but for COVID, will have been still, um, will, will still be like 10 years ahead of us. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we say is welcome yourself, whatever you are doing, welcome yourself into a borderless world and uh, what we call technocracy. And what is that? It's a world where all ideas, regardless of its texture or temperature, all ideas will be driven by technology 
and managed by technologies. So that is the easiest way to cross into the new economy that is upon us, you know, because whether we like it or not, you know, all of what we call, you know, reset economically, socioeconomically, is really about the shrinking of opportunities. And I tell people, when you hear the word recession, recession and stuff like that, don't let it bother you. Don't think too much about all of the technical jargons like GDP, per capita income, you know, growth rate and all of that. Just narrow it down to one word or one phrase, shrinking of opportunities. Hmm. A lot of people chasing few, few value. So it's just shrinking of opportunities. So when you say that you want to pivot, what you are saying is you want to be you know, amongst that group that are taking the opportunities because there will then be casualties, you know, there will then be victims. And those people most critically are those who are going to just sit down waiting for the tide to turn. And what I said to someone is that we're not going to sit down in 2021, like in 2020, taking all the body blows from COVID, just sitting down at home. We are going to respect the science but we are going to get out there as well. I call it adventure capital. Mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, too much respect for caution, we keep you stranded and weak, and then you must find another nimbleness that keep you cautious by respecting all the sciences of COVID, but you got to step out as well and pursue the opportunities that are available, particularly those that are laced in digital format. So what I would tell people is whatever you are trying to do, whether you are selling food or you are in the fashion space, to try all you can to ensure that your work is driven by technology and you have enough awareness to at least give direction to the technologies who manage that idea for you. Hmm. Okay. Too much I, respect for caution will keep you restricted and weak. <laughs> right. I, I, I mean, <clears throat> he made a lot of valid points, which is what I like. Uh, one of the things that stood out for me was that recession is shrinking mm. of opportunities. And definitely, like the quote we had earlier, if you're going to um, be relevant in the um, new upcoming years from the 2021s and above, you have to be a problem solver. Mm. You have to find a place within that shrinking opportunities and fix yourself and uh, provide solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Timmy, come in. <laughs> I mean, trust me to um, explore the financial literacy angle here. You talked about um, recession. Um, and to put it, shrinking of opportunities. And we must be among the groups taking the opportunities because there'll be casualties, right? And I couldn't agree more because when everything happened with the downturn in the global market and all of that, there were huge opportunities, you know, market dislocation. You just needed to know what to do. You needed to be able to identify the opportunity, have liquidity, and then harness the opportunity, right? So to my mind, people need to invest in themselves because that's what makes you a leader. That's what gives you the capacity to be able to think critically and find solutions. Right? So do you agree with me? Like, is that something that people need to um, chase very seriously this year? Like learning, investing in yourself, you know, to be able to build, because you can't just sleep and wake up and now just automatically be able to identify opportunity and know what to do with it. A lot of work goes into that. And I find that a lot of young people around here have, I don't know if it's an entitlement mentality or they don't want to do the work or they just want something or they just say, oh, you know, the economy is bad and everything. But as a place of putting in the work, what do you have to say to that? I, I totally agree, Timmy. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's so true. I think that that is the level playing field. You know, at a time in human history, all you need to do is to go to school. And once you go to school, you come into the level playing field. You are almost guaranteed that there will be engagement for you. After a time, we transcended that. In fact, at a, at a point in time, all you need to do is to be able to speak a form of English you know, of some sort. And once you can speak any form of English in the 40s, in the 30s, in the 50s, you get engagement because you are the one that will be engaged by the, the colonialist. Uh, um, you'll be the, the, the clerk in court. You'll be the interpreters. You know, their university degree became, there was a time as, as, as far as the, the, the 1940s, I don't think Africa had up to a thousand graduates. And so you can, I think university graduates. So you can imagine once you are able to go to school and you have a university degree, you have too much work to do, too much engagement, right? 
But after a while, it became a type of degree that you now have. Is it true one? Is it, is it is, you know, and all of that. And then it became, um, and then we call foreign degree, you know, foreign degree, foreign degree, foreign degree. That is particularly for those in Africa, you know. But today, you know, it's not about all of that. It's really about who you are, what you can do, how fast you can interpret, you know, how fast you can hold complex models in your head and pretty much, you know, um, and interpret them into your day-to-day -day experiences of contemporary life. Part of that, though, is that, you know, that has become the foundation. That is the list of what you can do. The extra, that in itself, while as important as it is, is not the, you know, um, critical success factor. Because what is now true is that you now have a lot of people. I mean, when I was growing up, there was no motivational speaker. When I was growing up, I didn't have somebody like Temi to tell me this. In fact, conversations like what Temi is saying is not even happening on TV. You know, when I was growing up, TV is just about how many hours a day. It starts at 4 o'clock, it ends at 11.15. And so a lot is packed into that, you know. So you don't even have time for all of this. But today, everybody now says, okay, I have to plan. You know, what I, the way I put it is that there's no... There's, everybody is wise in January. I don't know if you have noticed. Yeah. Everybody is smart. In, there's not one fool in January. In January, every year, people are smart. People think straight. People know what to do. All kinds of results. But by February, their wisdom will be tested. By, by March, to begin to crack. By, by April, they suffer relapse. And then they go. The idea is that, you know, re resolutions themselves are designed to fade. And so people need to, to transcend that. What I, what, I, what I think is critical now is for people to be able to see the end from the beginning, otherwise called strategic foresight. So but whatever you are doing now, where is it in 10 years' time? You know, I've said it to people, and I'll emphasize it again here. 2021 is not an independent year. Hmm. The experience of the pandemic has connected so many years together. We have bundled like 10 years together in one. The experiences of 2021 will not be too different from 2022, the experiences of 2023 will not be too different. In April, I said that COVID is not going away. We are going to have to coexist with it. I said that in April 2020, you know, and, and that is just the truth. It's not going away. So uh, it doesn't matter how many vaccines are made or not made. We're just going to continue to deal with it. Like to today, we still deal with chicken pox. There was a day it arrived. So today, we still deal with flu. There's, there was a day it arrived. You know, so COVID has arrived. You know, we're just going to continue to deal with it. You know, so the intelligence is being able to create difference for yourself. And part of that is looking at what you do and saying, you know, um, where, what, what, what is, what is, how, how, what, what, what is the engine that makes this work? And like I've said, all ideas, any idea that will not be interpreted in digital format in the, in, with, with technology will die naturally. Mm. So even mm -hmm. if you are cooking, what role, you know, that's the type of question, that's a practical question. If you, if you cook and you sell food, okay, how does technology help you to take your cooking to the world, to offer a better experience of what you do? So the first thing is the role of tech. The number two thing is the experience you are offering. I've said it before that total quality management is endangered now. It's not as critical as total experience management. In other words, what you are doing is not as critical as what people feel hmm. about what you are doing. That is why social media is rising. It's the rise of feelings. It's the rise of emotions. You know, we call it post-truth. The idea that how people feel about what is going on is more important than what is going on. So if you have an amazing thing that in itself is not unlock, unlocking the right feeling in people, it's going to be interpreted as mediocre. So how do you put all of that out? But there's an opportunity gap that I need to discuss here. The idea that powers are fading, right? There is a major shift that's going to happen in the human experience within the next 10 years, 20, 30 years tops, major shifts. The truth is that just put 20 years. I've said it here on the show before. Put 20 years, 30 years on, the, on anybody's age now, anybody's age. You see that the world has not been divided into three categories of people. You have the, those I call the departing generation, which is those between age 60 and above. Because if you are 60 with 30 years, you'll be 90. If you are 70, you'll be 100. If you are 80, you'll be 110. So those are the departing generation. Within the next 10, 20 years, anybody in that bracket will be at the departure lounge of life, ready to take the flight. Then you have people between age um, 30 and 59, that's those I call the interregnum generation, the generation between cause and effect. Then you have the takeover generation, which is those between age 29 and below. 
those are the guys to really okay. own the future. Mm -hmm. People between age 30 and 59 are the critical uh, um, demography that will take power from that departing generation. So if you look at some of the biggest names in the world in 10 years, you know, even if you look at American politics in the next 20 years, um, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Bill Clinton, you know, they will all be gone, you know. So new voices are rising. And this is why the interregnum generation, people between age 30 and 59, and the takeover generation have incredible opportunity because powers are fading. And, and, and I hate to say this, I'm not proud of this, you know, but there's a lot of body counts that is emphasizing this. I've been saying this for a while. We are seeing a lot of power centers leaving the scene a lot of power brokers leaving the scene because we have said it time and again, the 2020s is the fading of powers as we know it, the fading of voices as we know it, and the emergence of voices and powers in ways we are yet to know. And the interregnum generation, people between age 30 and 59, and the takeover generation, people between age 29 and below, are those who are going to be taking over those powers and becoming those voices in mm. different fields, in the arts, in, in business, in enterprise, in politics, in governance, in, in the media, in the sciences, in education, you know, and all of those, on, on all of those areas. So it's the greatest time to do the kind of things that Temi is talking about, to strengthen yourself, to position yourself, to, you know, update your skills, but most importantly, to get technologically correct. You know, whatever you are doing, get technologically correct. The reason why um, Netflix is making so much movies is because it's pretty much camping into the new habits that people are forming, yeah. you know. So new habits are forming, new, oh, new, cinema. new yeah. taste buds are forming, new prejudices are forming, new preferences are forming, and, and technology is making that happen. Just Absolutely. imagine, you know, the type of... Um, um, business that are rising within that space of Netflix alone. It's not just Netflix. You have QB, you have Prime Video, you have Hulu, you have all kinds of businesses rising there, you know. So um, it's, it's going to get more and more interesting. But Absolutely. my conclusion is whatever you do, the opportunity is in technology. Absolutely. And by that, it doesn't mean go and start selling computers or, or become a programmer. <laughs> it means use technology to drive the whatever way it is that you're you doing. do your thing. All the right. way people experience your work. That is the change factor. Okay, PK, we're just going to take a very, very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.